So when you think of a brain, you think of this large um, piece of it right here. It's trying to fall apart on you. Okay, known as the cerebrum. Okay, so it's all this stuff with the folds and all that stuff is the cerebrum. I'm going to put this down for you. Okay, and that cerebrum is broken up into two main hemispheres. Okay, your left hemisphere and your right hemisphere. Okay, and it's broken up by this long groove down the middle known as the longitudinal fissure running directly midline. Okay, then we have um, the corpus callosum. So we'll open it up here. And you see, it kind of looks like an upside down Nike sign right here. That is the corpus callosum. Corpus callosum. Okay, corpus callosum. All right. Next, we have the cerebral cortex, which is really just the outer layer of the cerebrum. It's the cerebral cortex. Okay. The gyri are all these ridges. So all these ridges that are coming up are the gyri, and all the little grooves in between them are the sulci. Okay. Fissures will cover specific fissures, such as the longitudinal fissure running directly down the middle. <laughs> So some terms that Taylor didn't go over for the brain, um, just some of the sulci and fissures that separate the lobes of the brain. So the first one we have is our, the only fissure in the brain is the longitudinal fissure going straight down that sagittal um, sectional plane that we learned a while ago. So that's our longitudinal fissure separating our two cerebral hemispheres. Okay. Then we have our lateral sulcus going across the side. So it kind of separates out right here from our parietal and our temporal lobes, right across the side. That's our lateral sulcus. Then we have our parietal occipital sulcus. So that goes around the back, separating out our parietal lobes from our occipital lobes. So that's right on this yellow line is our parietal occipital sulcus. Okay. And then going down the center of our, of our brain, we have our central sulcus going right on that transverse cross-sectional plane. Okay, so that's our central sulcus with our precentral gyrus on the front and postcentral gyrus on the back. Okay. All right, guys, good luck with the rest of your turns. Take it easy. Okay, guys, so in this section, we're going to cover the cerebellum, okay? So the cerebellum is right here, okay? And it is also broken up into two hemispheres, so you have a left and right hemisphere, okay? The outer layer of it is the cerebellar cortex, cerebellar cortex. All these little lines running through it are the folia, the folia, okay? Where the two hemispheres connect, you see this little ridge? See that little ridge where they connect? That is the vermis, okay? If you split it open and look at this um, white branching structure, that's the arbor vitae, which means tree of life. Super cool. All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to cover the diencephalon, the anatomy of the diencephalon, and some other related structures. So we start off with the diencephalon, which the pieces that you need to know on this model are going to be the um, thalamus, which is this bulgy portion right here, and the hypothalamus. Okay, So this bulgy portion right here is the thalamus, and then the flat portion right there is the hypothalamus. And if you see it, look at it long enough, you can see a seahorse. So the bulgy portion is the brain of the seahorse, that's the thalamus. The flat face portion of the seahorse is the hypothalamus, okay? Then on the back side, you see this little dot right here. That is going to be our pineal gland, which mainly can be seen on these models as this pink structure right there. That is going to be your pineal gland, okay? Then you also need to know your anterior commissure. So your anterior commissure is going to be um, kind of the eye of the seahorse right here. It's the anterior commissure just above the hypothalamus right there. Then you have your interthalamic adhesion, which connects the two thalamuses on both sides. So it's that little dot on top of the thalamus. That's the interthalamic adhesion. Next, we have our mammillary bodies, which I think is the Adam's apple of the seahorse. So it's this little dot on the bottom of the seahorse. So that's the mammillary body. So you think of it as it comes directly off the bottom of the hypothalamus. That is the mammillary body. Mammillary body. Optic chiasma or chiasm. 
okay? So you see leading up to the optic nerve, I'll show you right here. Leading up to the optic nerve, you have the optic chiasm, chiasm or optic chiasma, where the optic nerves cross, and then it leads you to the optic nerve. So you can always double check. It should lead you to the optic nerve, but right here it's known as optic chiasm or optic chiasma. Okay, pituitary gland is going to be right here. So pituitary gland is coming off of the hypothalamus, and it's connected to the hypothalamus by this thin little line known as the um, infundibulum. Infundibulum is connecting the pituitary gland to the hypothalamus. So then as far as the brainstem goes, I'm going to show you the three main regions of the brainstem real quick. Okay, so the three main regions of the brainstem, we have the midbrain, which is kind of the neck of the seahorse. The neck of the seahorse is the midbrain. Then we have the belly portion of the seahorse, that's the pons. And then the leg portion of the seahorse, that is the medulla oblongata. Okay, so on an isolated model, you can see the midbrain right here the pons up in front, and the medulla oblongata underneath that. Within the midbrain, you have a couple different areas in the midbrain you need to know. So the tegmentum is in the front. Tegmentum is in the front. The tectum is on the back, and it has a couple bumps on the back. So tectum is in the back. So on this model, you can see tegmentum portion of the midbrain up front. Tectum is in the back. And we'll cover those structures on the back, okay? So on the back, okay, right here. So we can see the back right there, and you see those four bumps. Those four bumps are known as the corpora quadrimina, corpora quadrimina. And the top two bumps are known as the superior colliculi, and the bottom two bumps are known as the inferior colliculi, okay? And then you need to know aqueduct of midbrain. So the aqueduct of the midbrain is just this canal running through the midbrain in between the um, tegmentum and the tectum on the back. Okay, aqueduct of midbrain. Next we have cerebral peduncles, which are essentially lines running down the sides of the neck. So down the side of the neck, okay, is going to be the cerebral peduncles. Cerebral peduncles, kind of going down the side of the neck of the seahorse. So the side of the membrane, cerebral peduncles. Over the pons, you see the pons right here. Okay, I'm going to fix it real quick. The pons has these fibers running across its belly, transverse fibers, transverse fibers. And then the medulla oblongata, you need to know that the central canal runs within it. So the central canal runs within it. So you see the central canal coming down from the medulla oblongata there and running continuous with the spinal cord. Okay. The olive, however, is a unique structure to the medulla oblongata. You see it's put together. So that bulgy portion is the pons. Up there, the neck is the midbrain, midbrain, pons, okay, medulla oblongata with that um pink dot right there, that pink dot is the olive, okay? It is in between some cranial nerves, okay? So it's in between some cranial nerves we'll cover in a second. Okay guys, so as far as the cranial nerves go, um, the olfactory nerve you cannot see. Um, on the models you can just see the olfactory bulb and the olfactory tracts leading up to the microscopic olfactory nerves. So, um, all the rest of them you can see on here. So we start off with the optic nerve, which is the tip of the nose of the seahorse. Okay. So here's the optic nerve right there. Which I think I'm not... There we go. Good. So the optic nerve is right there, tip of the nose. You can double check it by opening up and seeing the optic chiasma lead up to the optic nerve. Then you need to do a quick check. You open it up, okay? You see right here, that's the mammillary body. You don't want to get it confused with um, 
ocular motor nerve 3. Ocular motor nerve 3 touches the pons. Mammillary body touches the hypothalamus, okay? So ocular motor 3 touching the pons. Trochlear nerve number 4 on most models doesn't extend all the way. You just look to the back side and you see the trochlear nerve 4 extending from underneath the inferior colliculi. So it's trochlear nerve 4. Then we go to the front side and we see the pons. And on the pons we see these large white dots. These are the trigeminal nerve 5s. Trigeminal nerve 5. Then in the middle of the pons, abs, where you think your six pack would be, are your abducens nerve 6. So this is abducens nerve 6 right here. Abducens nerve 6. Then you go directly lateral to that. And you go to facial nerve 7. Then both these outside two white lines are depicting the vestibulocochlear nerve 8 because there's two branches, a vestibular branch and a cochlear branch. Then nerves nine, cranial nerves 9 through 12 will be on the medulla oblongata, okay, or the legs. So we move down, and you see right there is glossopharyngeal, so right there is glossopharyngeal nerve 9. Below it is vagus nerve 10. See the numbers helping you out. So you got glossopharyngeal nerve 9, okay vagus nerve 10 and then you have the skinny little one is accessory or spinal accessory nerve 11 okay so you have the olive right the front side of the olive is the hypoglossal nerve 12 the back side of the olive is glossopharyngeal 9 glossopharyngeal 9 vagus 10 accessory 11 bounce back for hypoglossal 12. All right, guys, in this section, I'm going to cover the structures of the derm matter. So the derm matter is the outermost meninges protecting both the brain and the spinal cord. We're going to talk about what they look like um, for the brain. Okay. So the dural folds, you have three specific ones you need to know. The false cerebri, which you can see right here. It's um, separating out the two hemispheres of the cerebrum, left from right. You have the tentorium cerebelli. That's separating out the cerebrum from the cerebellum underneath, okay? Tentorium cerebelli, look like stingrays. Fault cerebri, right there. Then within the skull, okay, you see this guy right here? That would separate out the two hemispheres of the cerebellum. So that's going to be your fault cerebelli. Fault cerebelli, you have to look in there to see it separating out. Then we have a couple sinuses you need to know. So on the top part of that false cerebri, you see that blue sinus running through the top. That's the superior sagittal sinus. Running down the lower end of it is the inferior sagittal sinus. And running around the edges of the tentorium cerebelli is the transverse sinus. And that is going to complete this section. All right, guys, in this section, we're going to cover the structures of the limbic system. So you have this model right here depicting the limbic system. Is that amygdala? Okay. So the amygdala is this large white ball right there. Large white ball. Okay. Leading up to it is the hippocampus. Hippocampus. Okay. Next we have the fornix, which rides over the top. And those lead to these mammillary bodies. So those little ball-like structures right there, mammillary bodies. Okay. In our cingulate gyrus, you actually have to look to the models for that, So, or the brain models. You see this kind of depression above the brain right there? That is the cingulate gyrus. You can see how it kind of curves right there. Cingulate gyrus. Okay. And so another area of the mammillary bodies is... The mammillary bodies are right there on the bottom of the hypothalamus, okay? Those are the mammillary bodies. I think of them as the Adam's apple of the seahorse. Okay, so on this model, guys, all you can see is the lateral ventricle, interventricular foramina, interventricular foramina connecting the lateral ventricle to the face, 
of this dragon, and that is going to be the third ventricle. Third ventricle. And then the third ventricle, when it hits its when it is the spine area, it's going to be the aqueduct of the midbrain, bringing it down to this widening, which is the fourth ventricle. Central canal you cannot see on this model. Okay. So we have also on the models, here's another depiction. You have the aqueduct of the midbrain running right here behind the midbrain. When it widens, there's the fourth ventricle leading you to the beginning of the central canal, which is continuous with the spinal cord. Okay, okay. so the septum pellucidum you can see right here, right below um, this big structure right here we'll talk about in a second. That's the septum, septum pellucidum. 